Hi, this is Sudhi and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Start Pro. We have just finished three episodes on the discussion on the use of equations of equilibrium. In this episode, we are back to problem solving. But before we go forward, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel to join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Start Pro. So today we are going to solve this problem, which is a touch more complicated than the earlier problems that we have solved. In this case, it is a simply supported beam. However, the roller support is resting on an inclined plane. The, there is an inclined load of 50 kips, which has been applied at a slope of three horizontal to four vertical. The roller support is inclined at three vertical to four horizontal. Now we want to solve this particular problem for the reactions of this structure. Now this is a statically determinate structure so we can solve the reactions of this particular beam using the equations of equilibrium. And as you can see I have taken this problem from the book Elementary Structure Analysis by Norris, Wilbur and Utko. So the first thing that we will do here is to draw the free body diagram of this particular structure. Now, if you remember, the free body diagram was a representation of this structural system with all its loads and reactions. So what we do is we replace the supports with their equivalent reactions. Now, on node number one, there was a pin support, so we have a both a horizontal reaction and a vertical reaction that would be developed. The reactions has been considered in the positive direction along the global axis system. The roller support, on the other hand, will have only one single reaction which will be acting normal to the plane on which the roller is supported. So, the first thing that we now need to do is to break the 50 kip load, inclined load, into its horizontal and vertical component. Now, we know that the 50 kip load has been inclined with a slope of 3 horizontal to 4 vertical, and thus the inclination of the 50 kip load would be given by 10 inverse of 4 by 3. So, the horizontal component of the load will be 50 kips multiplied by the cos of 10 inverse of 4 by 3, which would be 30 kips, and the vertical component of that load would be 50 kips into sine of 10 inverse 4 by 3, which would be 40 kips. Now, we replace the actual inclined load 50 kips with the 40 kip vertical load and 30 kips load that uh, we have derived as shown on the right side of the screen. Now the next thing that we need to do is to replace the vertical uh, force, vertical to the plane or the normal to the plane of the roller support into its two equivalent vertical and horizontal components. So we have R2H and R2V. At this point, it might seem to a student that this is a statically indeterminate problem because we have four unknowns, but actually it is not the case. R2H and R2V are both represented in the terms of R, and so it's a statically determinate problem. We will explain that in a second. So now let us have this R2, which is acting normal to the plane on which the roller is supported. To get a clear understanding, I have given the picture of the roller support on the top left of the screen for reference. Now this R2 is acting normal to the plane on which the roller is supported. So now let us draw the plane or let us draw a line that would be parallel to that particular plane. And then let us draw a horizontal line 
such that it intersects R2 at its tail. Now, both the horizontal line and the normal line uh, and the plane, the plane on which uh, the roller is supported or the line which is normal to the value of R2 intersects at an angle theta. Now, this theta can be calculated using the slope of the plane that is given, which is three vertical to four horizontal. So theta would be calculated as 10 inverse of three by four, which would be 36.87 degrees. Now, by the rules of the right angle triangle, we can calculate also the value of theta dash. And the value of theta dash would be calculated as 90 degree minus 36.8 seven degrees by again by the rules of geometry of a right angle triangle and thus theta dash would have a value of 53.13 degree now let us consider this r2 now we know the inclination of r2 with the horizontal so we can calculate the horizontal component of r2 which is represented by r2h and that would be given by r2 into cos of 53.13 degree, which would be 0.6 into R2. Similarly, the vertical component R2V of R2 would be calculated as R2 into sine 53.13 degree, and thus R2V would be equal to 0.8 multiplied by R2. Now, we now see that both R2H and R2V are represented as 0.6 R2 and 0.8 R2 and thus is represented in the terms of R2 and thus though at the beginning it seemed R2V and R2H are two unknowns but we can see that if we can solve for one we automatically get the value of the other and thus this is a statically determinate problem. Okay now let us get to the actual problem solving. Now remember that in this case we know for sure that R2H would be acting in the negative direction of the global x-axis and thus we have assumed it in that direction. In case our assumptions are correct, the values would come out as positive and if the values comes out as negative by chance, that would mean that we have to reverse our assumed direction or the force is acting in an opposite direction to the direction that we had initially assumed. Okay, so now let us start solving this problem. Now under this condition, as we can see, let us take the moment about point one. So moment about point one, about Z axis, which would be coming out of the screen towards you. And we can see that all the horizontal loads and reactions would pass through node number one, and thus would be ruled out of this particular equation. Again, R1V would also form or go through point number one and thus would be ruled out of the equation. So the only unknown that we have if we consider the moment about point number one or node number one is R2V. So R2V about point number one or node number one will create an anti-clockwise moment. So we'll consider this as positive the distance from node number one would be 24 feet. So we have R2V multiplied by 24 feet. And then we have 60 kip load, which is acting at four feet away from node number one. And thus the moment created would be 60 multiplied by four. And since the rotation would be clockwise, we have put in a negative term in front of the expression. And then we have 40 kip, lips, 40 kip of uh, load, which is acting at a distance of 12 feet from node number one. And it would create an anti-clockwise moment. So we have a positive 40 by 12. And then we have another 40 kip lo loads, which uh, was the vertical component of that inclined 50 kip load and that is acting at a distance of 20 feet away from node number one and it would create a clockwise rotation so we have a minus 40 multiplied by 20 and we 
sum it all of this to 0 and we get R2V as 23.33 kips. Now, as we have said, as soon as we know R2V, we know R2H as well. So, R2V would be 0.8 into R2. So, R2 can be expressed as R2V by 0.8. Now, R2H would be 0.6 into R2. So, we have 0.6 by 0.8 multiplied by R2V and thus we solve R2H as 17.5 kips. So, R2V is solved to be 23.33 kips and R2H was found out to be 17.5 kips. Both of the values came out as positive, so our assumed direction of the reaction is correct. The next thing that we do is we sum up the moments of all the forces in reaction about node number 2. Again, all the horizontal forces goes out of the equation and R2V2 goes out of the equation. The only unknown that remains in the equation is R1V. Now, R1V is located at a distance of 24 feet away from node number 2 and it would create a clockwise rotation with its assumed direction of being positive in the global y-axis. So we have R1V into or multiplied by 24 feet and then we have a 60 kip load which is acting at a distance of 20 feet and it would create an anti-clockwise movement. So we have 60 multiplied by 20 in the pos uh, and the sign is positive and then 40 kip loads acting at a distance of 12 feet creating a clockwise movement. So we have 40, minus 40 multiplied by 12 and finally a 40 kip load acting at 4 feet away from node number 2 creating an anti-clockwise moment. So we have a positive 40 multiplied by 4 and we sum all of this to 0 from which we get R1V as 36.67. Now we so use this equation of summation of fx or summation of all the force in the global x direction being 0 which is which means all the horizontal force equates to 0. Now what are the horizontal forces that we have? R1H is assumed to be acting in the positive direction, so R1H is positive, 30 kips is acting in the negative direction, so it is minus 30, and R2H has been found to be 17.5 kips acting in the negative direction of the global x-axis, x -axis, and thus we have minus 17.5, we equate them to zero, from which we solve the value of R1H as 47.5 kips. Thus, we have R1V as 36.67 kips and R1H as 47.5 kips. Now, based on what we have last learned in the three session on the use of equations of equilibrium is that if we have used the moment equation on collinear points, we have not yet established the validity of, of the, the results that we have obtained unless we have also used summation of fx, fy equal to zero. But in this case, we have only used the summation of moments equal to zero and summation of fx equal to zero equation. We have not used summation of fy equal to zero. So in this case, it would be important for us to check whether summation of fy is zero and we have summed up all the vertical loads that is available and we did find all of the vertical forces are zero, hence the results are valid. Now, if you have not understood why we have used this check, I would suggest you look into sessions 60 and 61 where we have discussed this in details. Now, if you want to also find out the value of R2, if you are not interested to find out the horizontal and vertical components of R2, but you want to find out R2, itself, which is the reaction that would be acting normal to the plane on which the roller is supported. All that you do is you sum up, you do a square root of R2H square plus R2V square, and you solve R2 as 29.16 kips, thus R2 would be 29.16 kips. In the next session, we will model this problem in Stat Pro, and we will solve the reactions from StatPro results. We will see how we can do that in the next session. 
I hope you have enjoyed the session today. If you have, please do hit the like button and please do join me in the next session to see how we can solve this problem in Start Pro. Not only solve, but how we can model this problem in Start Pro and then how we can solve and interpret the results from Start Pro. So see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye.